Hey, John, how are you? Uh, on, in all my uh, time on the road, I've never had a sword collector, and especially such a celebrated sword collector. <laughs> oh, why, thank you. This is, uh, this is Zen Gesner, and you're the star of The Adventures of Sinbad. Yes, I am. Now, on the show, you're always handling swords, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's nothing new to you, right? You've been, no. you've been handling swords all your life. This has always been a passion for me, John. Uh, since I was three, my father always had uh, swords lying around the house, and uh, it, it was always... Uh, it was a matter of fascination for me. I always dreamed about it. When I was five years old, my mom produced a film for a director's workshop. And uh, it follows this little boy who runs along the beach looking for rocks. And he goes to this tide pool. And in the tide pool, he pulls out a sword. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think my mother was uh, kind of planting the seed way back then <laughs> for what was to come in the future. And it's not gotten out of hand, right? The sword Oh, collecting. it's gone completely out of hand. Man. But it's getting close. It's getting close. And handling swords, did that help yeah. you get the job? It did indeed. Yeah. Uh, when I went away to college in England, um, I, I went there for four years and I apprenticed a fight director because I thought this might be a good part-time profession as being a fight choreographer mm -hmm. for theater and film and TV. Well, I learned, over those four years, I learned everything there is to learn about fight and uh, about collecting weapons. And um, I'm going to show you a little bit about my collection today. Good. John, <laughs> not only does he collect swords, he can handle them, so I will be on my best behavior. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, well we'll Zen, be I, <laughs> Zen, I was going to say, I know J.D. well enough to say he's probably not trained in this, so just keep him away from these things, will you? <laughs> I will. All right. I will indeed. And I'm clumsy. Yeah. So. Ooh. <laughs> All right, we'll check in with the two of you we'll later on. Swords. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Thanks, Jay. Hey, John, every collector has a prized possession, and as far as swords are concerned, this is Zen Gessner's. He was, the, uh, he was a student at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts, and he won this as a prize in a stage fight competition. Yeah. Now, this is a what sword? This is a basket-hilted rapier, and it has a companion piece, which is uh, the main gauche right here. Wow, and, and this uh, was crafted, this by, was your crafted instructor? by my instructor in the college and uh, my fight master. Thanks. So it's very, very special to me. That's great. And if you look at these swords and you think that they're just props, uh, oh, you are so Stand back, wrong. John. Stand back. Check You're, this out. Huh. Look out. Yes. Hungry all yeah, work. Okay. <laughs> we'll be back with a more cutting collection coming up next <laughs> on Personal <laughs> FX. Mm. A little bit of that. Ooh, it's I have been very impressed by Santa. Swordsmanship. Oh. The way he sliced that watermelon like that. Not only does he collect these swords, but he really knows <laughs> how to use them. And uh, if you watch The Adventures of Sinbad, of course, it's syndicated. Check your local listings. This is what you would see. This is in, in action as The Adventures of Sinbad. Take a look. <laughs> Well, well, Talia. Long time no see. More time I'd be dead, you see, slug. Simple thank you would suffice. So I guess it's safe to say at garage sales and flea markets, he gets the swords he wants, I think. Our hero. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see some more out there in Malibu, California. J.D., take it away. Hey, he was showing me his stuff, and, and, and uh, he was winning. <laughs> now, Sinbad, uh, last year was the first season, but this is not just any old show. I mean, this yeah. was the number one rated action adventure show of Coming last season. Coming out of season. this last fall, yeah. That's it's, great. Yeah, we're just so excited to see the feedback and the, the wonderful response for it. And it's you're getting well. ready to to go uh, shoot your second yeah. season in two weeks in, in, in two South weeks. Africa. In South Weeks for about six to eight months in South Africa, wow. which is a beautiful place. South yeah. Africa is probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, which is the reason we're, we're filming there. <laughs> oh. And John Clare, it's interesting because last season he was shooting in South Africa yeah. while the show was mm -hmm. airing here. And you got really we, no feedback we got no attention. We had no idea what was going on back here in the States. And uh, it was just so wonderful to get off the plane and just see response and see 
little kids freaking out on the street. Oh, my God, Sinbad! <laughs> I loved that. After eight months of, of, of essentially nothing yeah. over there, and then it was like the floodgates opened when it, you got home. It was home. just wonderful. But you're actually holding the Sinbad sword. This is it. Ah, that's <laughs> it. The authentic Sinbad yeah, sword. And, and this is a prop sword. Yes, correct? it is. But uh, we have about 18 exactly the same hanging on a wall in South Africa. It's made out of aluminum, and it's actually stale, styled after a medieval falchion. Mm -hmm. This is a European broadsword weapon from the medieval period, and uh, yeah, that, it's easy to fight with, it's quick, <laughs> a lot quicker than a scimitar, which is what you'd probably think Sinbad would be using. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me show you my collection over here. We have... What is this sword? This is a cutlass, mm -hmm. and uh, if you remember the old Errol Flynn Seahawk film, and... Uh, and all those classic adventure yeah. films of the 30s and 40s. This is what he used. This is what he used when he's hanging off the ship from a mast ah. and, and he's swiping at the pirates. This is the this is the blade that he used. Cool. Wow. And these can date back how far? Oh, like that, that style well, sword. This style sword can date back about 300, 400 years. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Oh. This was the watermelon sword. We're going <laughs> to pass that one up. And, Come on uh, through. This, the sword fighting and yes. sword collecting is really a family tradition for you, right? Yes. A lot of things were passed on. Uh, for instance, there's a broadsword here that was passed down from my mother's side to my family. And for Christmas. Yes. Some people got socks or ties or whatever, but you got a sword every I, yeah, year. Yeah, that, that was, it, we're very unconventional for Christmas. We, uh, <laughs> you know, some people do get underwear, or some people do get socks for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I get swords. <laughs> so, my but parents, it's worked for him. Yeah, it, it's worked to my benefit. Now look at this one. This Tell one's us about this one. This one's an ancient uh, Japanese sword. And if you look closely, this is ivory here, hand-carved ivory, which follows a samurai's life all the way down the entire... Sheath. Oh, that's now would would this be made for the samurai and carved, or would they carve it as the samurai goes? Uh, they would carve this as the samurai went. Wow, that now, that that is actually a date line. Can you pull that out so we can see? Well, the blade? it's a it's a pretty delicate piece here, but that's wow. the actual blade. Gosh, that is incredible. That and is. how old's that? Do you know? Oh, oh boy, I don't have an actual date on this, but. I'm it's dying old to find enough. Out. It's still, <laughs> it is old enough. And then this was those the, are the swords that I won in college. That's right. <laughs> this was a Christmas present <laughs> from my dad. What kind of sword is that? This is a small broadsword, English broadsword. So, uh, yeah, a lot of archers wore this along with their longbows. Wow. Yes. Okay. Oh, now tell us move over these. here. Well, when I was growing up, I said when I was three or four years old, uh, we had sabers around the house. My dad learned saber as a young kid growing up in Santa Monica, he went and took fencing lessons, mm -hmm. and uh, he had these laying around the house when I was growing up, and one of the first things I learned, and he taught me, was the basic defenses. Now step back, go ahead. <laughs> step back, John. What are the basic moves? Uh, just the basic defenses for Sabre, mm -hmm. and uh, that sparked my interest way back then, and it's always been a passion of mine since. Hey, when you were a child, did you always see yourself as like this Errol Flynn type character? I loved those films, and I loved the old action-adventure films of the 30s and 40s, and I grew up with this every Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. sitting in front of the television set. So, yeah, it is a passion of mine, and I've always wanted to be an action hero of that generation, wow. <laughs> yes, so to speak. Oh, I was just want to ask, then, what is the, the difference, really, between a saber and a sword? The saber uh, and a saber and a sword. Well, a sword, uh, let's see, uh, the difference between a broadsword and a saber. A broadsword has two edges. It's a double-edged weapon. I see. And uh, a saber is a single edge, and it's curved. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And it has one side that's dull and the other side that's uh, curved. And I got you. What it was used for is on horseback. When, when somebody's riding into battle, it was a lot easier for somebody to slash like this on either side of the horse. I see. Uh, with a saber than it was a broadsword. Mm -hmm. Broadswords got stuck, and mm -hmm. you, tried <laughs> yeah. to, uh, you couldn't really fight with it. So that it was makes actually sense. a sword yeah. for horseback. But this piece. This is his prized <laughs> possession. Not just a sword. This is the prized possession. This is the very prized possession. Now, back in the medieval period, what, uh, what knights did when they wanted a piece of armor was they would commission an artist to build the armor for them. Now, like today, a clothes designer will make a sketch of, right. of, of a piece of clothing before they actually make the clothing. This is a medieval this sketch. Is, this <laughs> is a medieval sketch, and they usually destroyed this after the armor was made so that the knight's secrets and the secrets of the armor 
would not be let out. Wow, and this dates back to... This, oh boy. Like this, a, the, this the 12th is, century. Yes, it is. It's a 12th century piece, and it's made completely to scale. You'll even see here. Wow. Uh, the sword Amazing. is actually real. That is great. Every piece of chain mail on here is hand-woven. Uh, it's fascinating. Wow. I love it. Wow. Thank you very much, then. Thank you for welcoming us, welcoming us into your home and uh, well, this is a pleasure showing us your incredible collection. Thank you so much, John. Thank and you. Thank you. It is. And incredible. you can catch them, the Adventures of Sinbad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good luck with that show, Zen. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, JD. All right. Bye, John and Claire. Okay. Imagine finding a prototype like that. Yeah. Isn't it Ooh. cool? Yes. Yeah. Very cool.